Hello everyone, I'm Steve Hartman. Thanks for joining us on this holiday. Well, you're at home spending time with your friends and family, and I'm here in my home spending time with mine. We thought this would be a good opportunity to share with you some of our favorite holiday stories. Hopefully, it'll also be a good reminder as to what the season is really all about. And we're gonna start with some of my favorite stories. I've done this 11 times, stories about Secret Santa, the anonymous wealthy businessman who goes around giving out $100 bills to random strangers. I'm gonna show you two of the trips we've done with him. But first, here's the story behind the story. Merry Christmas to you, sweetie. It's the one story that never gets old. <laughs> Every year we ride with Secret Santa as he and his elves hand out hundreds of hundreds to random strangers across the country. Oh my God, this is crazy. You've no doubt seen the happy endings, but almost no one knows the humble beginning. Thank you so much. The legend of Secret Santa can actually be traced back to a single act of kindness in Houston, Mississippi. It was 1971. A homeless man had wandered into town, and he was starving. The stranger stopped here at the Dixie Diner and ordered the biggest breakfast on the menu. His plan was to sneak out before the bill came. But the owner, a guy named Ted Horn, sensed what was about to happen. So he snuck up behind the guy with a $20 bill in his hand and said, I think you may have dropped this. And that was the end of it, as far as he's concerned. David and Sandra Horn are Ted's children. They say their dad died in 2009, but that one gift keeps giving. That one little $20, just look what it did. It's difficult to imagine that. The money went to a man named Larry Stewart, who vowed that day if he ever got rich, he would return the favor in spades. Larry eventually made millions in cable and long distance and became the first Secret Santa. His identity revealed only after he was diagnosed with terminal cancer in 2006. In January, Which brings us to Larry's good friend, Larry was hospitalized. the current hospital. Secret Santa. And I went up to visit him at night, moonlight shining in, kind of was surreal. So I asked Larry, I said, do you have any regrets? And he said, yes. I said, what is it? He said, I just wish I could have helped more people. After giving away more than a million dollars to total strangers, Larry still felt more needed to be done. So that's when I assume the responsibility. Over the last decade, this new secret Santa has run the total to more than $2 million, and all from 20 bucks. Talk about happy returns. The current secret Santa has continued his giving and sharing, spreading Larry's message of kindness far and wide. And we still get to tag along every year. One of our most popular ride-alongs was in 2014, when Secret Santa turned to some elves in blue in Kansas City. Earlier this month, in Kansas City, Missouri, the Jackson County Sheriff's Department was out looking for people. And when they spotted a subject, they went after him in a sting operation, the likes of which this country has never seen. Hello, ma'am. Your vehicle was targeted. What do you mean? Oh, my gosh. Okay. What made this operation especially unusual was the man behind it. Good morning. A fellow in a red hat, known to these men only as Secret Santa. We got a mission today to go out and do random acts of kindness. Every year, this anonymous, wealthy businessman gives out about $100,000 worth of $100 bills to random strangers. But, but this year, instead of doing it all himself, he deputized these deputies to give away much of it. Okay, let's start with 1000 And so, armed to the teeth with Benjamins, the officers went out to do Santa's bidding. On a red and color Chevy Cavalier. They specifically went after people they thought would appreciate it most. Cars driving while dented or out on Bondo were likely targets. Merry Christmas. You're kidding. See that? Yes. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> Most people okay. weren't just blown away. Thank you okay. so much. Most people were brought to tears. Did that make your day better? <laughs> Their reactions, a combination of really needing the money. Are you serious right now? And being caught so off guard. Hello. He just looked straight at me and turned around and pulled me over with no car. Hold on. How you doing, ma'am? I'm good until you pulled me over. Okay. Well, on behalf of Secret Santa, he wants you to have this. Okay? Jessica Rodriguez, a mother of three, told the deputy he saved her Christmas. I wasn't going to be able to give my kids anything. 
Well, I hope you maybe get your kids something with them. As always, moments like that are the main mission here. All right, you have a good holiday season. But this year, Secret okay. Santa also had a secret agenda. What do you want the officers to get out of this? Joy. You know, as tough as they are, they have hearts that are bigger than the world. Let's face it. It hasn't been a good year for law enforcement, Copy, thank you. but for the vast majority of decent officers who will never make headlines, Secret Santa offered this gift. Appreciate it, man. That help out? A chance to be the bearer of good news for a change. Congratulations. A chance to really help the homeless, to thank the law abiders, to see hands up in celebration and then be assaulted in the best possible way. There were a lot of hugs. Our body cameras took a real beating, but it was worth it just to see people trust again and to see cops You're welcome. surrender. You have a good holiday. <laughs> if you thought police handing out $100 bills was a Christmas miracle, wait till you see this next sleigh ride, where Secret Santa shows us that help sometimes comes from the people and places you'd least expect. Ma'am, how are you doing today? You ready for Christmas? A lot of people ignore the homeless, but folks rushing past hey, Moses today, Elder like may regret their haste. Yeah, I'm blowing it. Because this week, hey, all people had to do was pay him some attention. Ladies! And he would pay them back in Benjamins. So there's $100 for you? You can imagine the shock. $100 for you. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's what Christmas is all about. Moses's mission was financed by Secret Santa. Merry Christmas to you, sweetie. The same anonymous wealthy <laughs> businessman who every year goes around the country handing out $100 bills to random strangers. What to do with this? But this holiday season, in addition to his normal giving, he came here to Phoenix. Good morning. Good morning. And recruited this most unlikely homeless elf. I want to enlist you to help me. Can we do that? <laughs> yes. All right, oh, so, man. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. One. He gave Moses about $3,000 with the instruction to give it away to whoever he saw fit. I think this will be a, a joyful experience for him. You know, it's a myth that, you know, the homeless just take. From my experience, the people with the least give the most of what they have. We saw that too. Uh, hey, come here for a minute. Come here. Danny McCoy put change in the cup, even though he has seven kids. And until this moment, this one hundred dollars for you, sir, for showing your kind heart. Had no idea how he was going to buy Christmas presents. I'm eternally grateful for for what he did. You are looking for a job? And that's the kind of relief Moses brought to so many here. You had that for me. Sure? Most of those he blessed were strangers who just happened by. God bless you. But not all. We love you. Don't you ever forget that. He gave this guy from church $400. He gave this homeless mother of five $500. And remember, people appreciate you with your caring, giving heart that you take care of your kids the way you do. Thank you. Okay? Of course, in the end, Secret Santa also gave Moses some money to keep for himself. This here is a new beginning for me. But he says that reward pales to the joy he received from helping others. Today we changed a lot of people's lives, but I believe my life was changed the most. God bless us both. He says even when you're homeless, it feels so much better to give than receive. Y'all don't know, I'm happier than y'all. You know, kindness is a bridge between all people. And so if you're ever down and you want to lift yourself up, go do something kind for somebody. Maybe that'll help you. It'll make you feel like way more than a hundred bucks. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. Santa told us he ran into Moses again just recently. He was helping serve food to other homeless people. The kindness continues. We'll have more holiday stories for you coming up right after this. I'm Steve Hartman. Welcome back. We're looking at some of our favorite holiday stories of all time. Now let me ask you, what's the best thing you could possibly imagine under the Christmas tree? This little girl's answer might surprise you. <laughs> Whenever I think of the true meaning of Christmas, 
I'm always reminded of what happened in this second grade classroom outside Raleigh, North Carolina. Go ahead and open it. It was 2011, and the guy in the Santa suit had just given every one of these kids the exact toy they asked for in their letters. <laughs> every kid, that is, but Bethany Arnold, who refused to ask him for a single toy. Dear Santa, my daddy is in Iraq. Could you bring him home, home for, for Christmas? Christmas? That would be the best gift of all. Did you know you were asking for something that was kind of tough? Mm, yes, but, well, it's tough to go around the world in one night. That's true. And I've never wanted anything more than that. Bethany's dad, Wendell Arnold, was a contractor in Iraq, repairing the country's electrical infrastructure. I understand that he has to stay and help people, but I do miss him a lot. Last time they saw each other, they exchanged these keychains. This is his heart. She carried his while he held on to hers. I told her, I said, the next time that I see you, I'll, I'll give your heart back. <laughs> Unfortunately, bringing two hearts together at Christmas isn't always a government hey. priority which is why this year Bethany decided to appeal to a higher authority, Santa. She even asked him again at school. Santa, for Christmas, I want my dad to come home. And that's when her wish began coming true. That's when she got her heart back. And that's when I got my reminder of what this weekend is all about. Daddy! <laughs> There's not a toy in the workshop that ever got this kind of reaction. You sure you don't want something else? I'm just so happy that you're home. Not a bow big enough to wrap the joy. Since this story first aired, Wendell is now back home for good. He says he missed his family too much to stay away another minute, proving the only thing better than a dramatic homecoming is a family you know will always be there. This is my daughter, Meryl. I know she misses me a lot when I'm gone, even just for a couple days, right? Yes. You're always crying when I get home. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Do you want to help introduce the next story? Yes. Okay. Next, we're going to visit a place in upstate New York that's busier than Santa's workshop. But there's not an elf in sight. <laughs> for Charlie and Dorothy Hale of Rochester, New York, Every day is like Christmas morning. Ooh. Bright, shiny woodwinds and worn out old brass. Brown cardboard packages tied up with strings. Used musical instruments are their favorite things. This just came from FedEx. They show up all day without intermission. That's a big one. And each piece in some form of disrepair. Oops, I told you it had some problems. They started out buying these broken instruments a few years ago after Dorothy took a class in instrument repair. I always loved to take things apart, and it's about time I learned how to put something together. <laughs> I put shellac on that. Dorothy, a retired chemist, and Charlie, a retired doctor, are both now in their 80s, but still very active in this passion to restore musical instruments to their former glory and then give them away by the hundreds. So far, the Hales have donated nearly a thousand instruments to the Rochester School District. Allison Schmidt is the lead teacher for the arts department. Can everybody play an instrument here who wants to? Absolutely. It's unbelievable for two humans to care so much about other people's children. Allison says the impact has been huge, but it was interesting. When I tried to talk to the Hales about this, they seemed downright oblivious. I have no doubt you've changed lives, and that to me is the, you don't think so? No, I don't. There are ripples of effect, I hope, you know. Ripples? Sophomore William Delgado says it's more like tidal waves. Really music has and can create somebody, and he created me. Studies consistently show that music education helps kids do better in school overall, if for no other reason than it makes them want to attend. I wish you could be there every time I get to hand an instrument to a student and their eyes light up. Fortunately, 
The Hales are now starting to understand. If I could thank you every single day of my life, I would. As we go into the holidays, it's good to remember that there is no greater gift than simply telling someone just how important they really are. Since we first aired that story a couple weeks ago, dozens of viewers have reached out to donate used instruments to Charlie and Dot. Now that's music to our ears. Christmas is always the most wonderful time of year in the Giles household, where they gather to proudly look to the future while never forgetting the past. Long ago, but not nearly as long ago as you might expect, sharecroppers worked this field in South Carolina. As late as 1964, Bo and Lake Giles were still toiling like indentured servants. In fact, their children say they were, by far, the poorest family around. We had to pick cotton all day long. Oh yeah, you had to uh, pick cotton during the school year. We could only go to school when it was raining. There was very little food. I was praying every day, God, get us out of this situation. But even as those prayers went unanswered, the Giles children knew there was a better life out there because it was so tantalizingly close. The shack they lived in used to be right there. But in their view, just past this pond here, there was another house. You can see it right back there. It's really just a modest home. But to those sharecroppers' kids picking cotton in these fields, that place seemed like the Taj Mahal. Me looking across the street at it, it looked like a mansion. You know, they got a bathroom and stuff. Felt like they were rich compared to our broken down home. You had flowers. All of that was a sense of freedom. And all of that is why it felt like liberation when half a century later, the Giles family moved across the street into the Taj Mahal. Some of the siblings pooled their money to buy the property, which they're now renovating to use for family reunions and holiday gatherings. Eventually, the plan is to put the house in a trust so future generations of Giles will know the story and learn the lesson. That poverty doesn't have to beget poverty. That through education and determination, poverty can breed success. Dorothy became a teacher. Ruthie, a nurse. Roosevelt, chairman of the board. But he says still a sharecropper in his soul. It ensures your appreciation of where you come from. Across the way, and now we're sitting here instead of sitting over there. We have a better life. This holiday season, many Americans will be unwrapping presents. But for families like the Giles, the greatest gift is the only gift that truly keeps on giving. The sacrifice of those who made all this possible. As the Giles showed us, the best way to spend the holiday is with family. And no one knows that better than the dad we met in Buffalo, who's definitely on the nice list this year. When 48-year-old Lamont Thomas became an empty nester, it was the end of a parenting legend. Back in 2001, this divorced father of two took on a foster kid named Michael Perez. He was a good young man, you know, and I, I just hated to see him in the system. Eventually, Lamont adopted Michael, who now works as a nurse. I don't believe that I would be the person that I am today uh, without the morals that he instilled in me, the family, the extended family that I have now. How extended is that family? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, if I had enough fingers and toes to count. Turns out Michael was just the beginning. That's Marcus. Over the next 15 years, Jamie. Lamont fostered more than 30 kids here in Buffalo, New York. Herman. And adopted five of them. And JJ. And again, he did this all on his own and with all of his heart. Every child that I have had, it was my goal to make a difference in their lives. You fell in love with these kids, huh? Yeah, proud of them. And you retired from fostering? I did. Go fishing? Oh yeah, did plenty of fishing. Trips? Love all of that. Of course, we wouldn't be here today if that was still the case. Yes, sir. It really was a shocker. I didn't expect for him to restart um, and to do it all over again. It's just amazing. 
Today, Lamont is back in the game in a big way. Not long ago, he took on five siblings, all under the age of six. Major, are you eating books? Lamont, who works as a caterer, says he did have other plans for these years. I didn't think it was this. But those plans have now been shattered with mayhem. When was the last time you went fishing? It wasn't this summer. <laughs> Papa! Papa! Yes. Lamont decided to foster all five after he found out they were going to be permanently split up. Yes. And to guarantee they stay a family, okay. last month, he adopted them. Very good. You are hereby adopted. I had to help them. They deserve to be raised together. Fortunately, Lamont has a great support system through church and friends. And he's not opposed to adding a wife to the mix, should such a saint exist. Don't lick my mirror, please. But if not, he's also fine going it alone for as long as it takes to make the difference. Have you calculated when the last one's going to be out of high school? We got a lot of years to go, but it's all right. It's all good. Lamont Thomas, definitely all good. Mm -hmm. Tonight, there are five new stockings hung by the chimney with care in the Thomas household. I'm sure Santa will be kind to them, and hopefully to you too. That's our special for tonight. We'll be back with another half hour of our favorite stories from 2019. That'll be right here on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day on CBSN. Until then, I'm Steve Hartman, wishing you a Merry Christmas and a joyful, healthy New Year.